I'm surrounded by hexagon grids. But not just the ones from my Prusa Mint filament spools, but I also printed and designed, designed and printed a couple of hexagon grids over the last years. All started with this little boy here. Let me show you. Now this is a light former grid for my aperture light. As you can see, uh, the hexagon shapes are used to form channels and those channels are letting light through only in one direction. And if it's going in another direction, then it's completely blocked off. It's a way to direct light into a specific direction. I actually have more of those. This has another grid. Holy Now the biggest grid that I have is actually this one and also the sparking point for this video. A 60 centimeter light former grid for my big softbox here, printed from PLA in those segments to make it fit uh, onto my Prusa Mini. It was actually a breeze to design because of the new technique that I would like to discuss with you now. So why all this? In the past, it has been really a pain in the ass for me to design those hexagon grids in Fusion 360. There's a ton of tutorials out there, but many of them are coming up with very obscure approaches to define the basic hexagon shape and then add some weird, if not to say really weird construction line, helper lines that you need to add and then multiplying this basic shape by some hilariously crooked dimensions to replicate with the right spacing. Others are just defining the basic hexagon shapes and then aligning them side by side. But this is also very cumbersome and, and difficult to work with, especially if you want to change dimensions and the spacing of the hexagons later in a later step. It's basically impossible. All in all, it was a very unnerving and also unpredictable workflow, at least for me. And so I kept searching. And then finally, I just stumbled over a video that was really an eye-opening, simple approach for Fusion 360 grids. And this approach just makes it all so much easier. So let's jump right into it. It all starts in a confined space, like in this example inside of a box outline, by adding a standard hexagon polygon. And then we are adding two construction lines that make all the difference in this approach. Now, when we are assigning the rectangular pattern to this very basic polygon, there is another selection field called directions. And with this field, you can influence where the pattern is expanding to. Even more important, as those lines are perpendicular to the outside edges of the polygon, there is no need for awkward dimensions or any calculations whatsoever. We can simply use the bare dimensions of the polygon itself. For simplicity, one can also switch to spacing mode of the pattern tool to make it even easier. Then we are multiplying the shape to completely fill out the box outline. The excess grid samples can be suppressed if needed. Until this moment, the polygons have no thickness to them. To give them a thickness, we select them and then we need to call in the web tool. The magic ingredient that does all the work for us in a non-destructive way. And that is even the best part. Adaptations later are a breeze. So now, this is a real game changer, at least to me and my future projects. And I already put it to use to design this big softbox grid over there, as I told you. By the way, if you're interested to learn how I did this, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. And if you like this video, I would be really happy if you smash the thumbs up and maybe leave a subscribe. I would be so happy. Thanks. It was a joy talking to you. It was a joy making this video. I'm Bushy. See you next time. Over and out. <laughs> Fuller Man Prusa Mint. Fuller Man uh, Prusa Spool. The magic ingredient that will does the, the is a really is a really game changer. I told you about, and if you're interested to learn how I did the, how, what's happening, why is this American saying my mouth replicates the basic shape and give this gift. <laughs>